Good morning, government students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and these are notes for Chapter 7, Section 3, and Chapter 7, Section 4. So we're going to take a look at influences on lawmakers, and this is both in the House and the Senate. So here we go. Here, are, Who are some of the people that can influence our lawmakers? We have constituents. Those are the people back home. Your political party, be it Republican, Democrat, or Independents. Speaker of the House, doesn't matter if you come from a opposition party, the Speaker has a certain way of getting people to do things that they probably wouldn't do otherwise. Lobbyists, they hold a lot of power because they hold the wallet and the purse strings. The President, if this is a piece of legislation that the President feels very passionate about, uh, they will personally contact you and maybe even invite you to the White House to chit chat. Other lawmakers, your peers, hold probably a greater influence than probably a lot of these other folks. Your campaign contributors or workers, people who help you get to where you're at, um, they kind of want something in return for their vote and, you know, having their attention is very important. The majority leader, either in the House or Senate, um, holds a lot of influence. And finally, your members of your staff or even your committee members can also be a huge influence. All right, taking a look at the bottom, uh, the influence of the party politics on common issues. And what we're going to try to figure out is who supports what. Now, my audience here, I may need your help for this. Okay. Ooh, yes. All right. So, what political party likes to help low-income people and develop projects for them? Republican or Democrat? Republicans? No, it's the Democrats. The, the Republican. No, okay. All right. Limited government intervention on the economy. In other words, they want the government to keep their hands off the econ. Republican or Democrat? Republican. It, it's all going back to that laissez-faire stuff that we talked about in econ. Uh, the next item, less government spending. Who would like to spend less money, Republicans or Democrats? Republicans. Democrats like to spend money. All right. Social welfare programs. These are to help the needy. Democrats, absolutely. Think New Deal. Uh, greater government regulation of business. In other words, we want the government to tell business what to do. It is absolutely the Democratic Party who would like to get into the middle of that. Job programs through public works. Public works are things like the New Deal, okay, which they are the Democrats. Love that. Less government regulation of business. Uh, Republicans, definitely. And then finally, local and state rather than national solutions to the problems. Republicans. Excellent job. All right. We're going to take a look at Chapter 7, Section 4. And so you're going to need to find that worksheet. And we're going to talk a little bit about the casework that members of Congress do for the people back home. And up at the top, you have some information or a couple of boxes here talking about casework examples of it and the purposes of that and we're going to kind of go through and then eventually we'll talk a little bit about how our lawmakers try to bring some money home for all of us folks so some examples of casework we talked a little bit about this the other day um, if we have an individual who's a member of the military who let's say has a, a loved one who's ill uh, they may contact their members of congress to see if there's a possibility of being moved closer to home to be moved to a military base uh, so that they can still have contact with their loved ones. You could have a local business person uh, who has some issues and claims that the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC is treating them unfairly. Uh, they may contact their local congressman to issue a complaint and maybe to have their claim investigated. You can have an individual who may be in high school. Uh, who is interested in finding some type of internship with the U.S. government. 
and they may be contacting their congressman to see if they can get a recommendation or have any prospects. Okay, so the question is why would members of Congress want to do this casework? What's the purpose behind it? Well, probably the big one is to help get the congressman reelected. Uh, if you're doing good things for the people back home, the voters are going to remember that, and when they go and vote, they'll probably vote for you. When you talk about other reasons, uh, the casework, the work that our members of Congress do, it's one way that we can kind of keep a check on the president, the executive branch of government. So that's a very positive thing. Casework is also an opportunity for us to have contact uh, with our federal government. Okay, our government is huge, and I think in, in most people's opinion, uh, they feel like they're kind of removed from it. But when you contact your members of Congress, they can use their clout to kind of make things happen for you, the common person. All right. Does anybody know what this is? Yes, it is. Do you know what the name of that bridge is? Yeah, it's a, it's a pedestrian bridge. It's called the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge, a.k.a. the Bridge to Nowhere. Why did we build this bridge? Yeah, it's, it's not like we're driving cars or anything like You could get a golf cart on there, but um, yeah, don't be thinking that, by the way, over there. Um, it, it's not necessarily for, you know, for moving traffic or anything like that, but it's more for recreation and it's more for tourism, I think is probably the key. Uh, when this thing was built, and it's been probably about 10 years ago, uh, there wasn't a lot of development. About the only thing that was kind of at the end of the bridge was the Century Link Center in Omaha, or back when it was known as the Quest Center. Now what's happening? Does anybody know what's happening on the other side of the bridge? Any clue? Okay, no idea. State of Iowa has built a park over there, and what they're wanting to do is hold concerts, outdoor concerts. And they last year they had one, they're going to have another one this year. The deal is, why would you spend you know, millions upon millions of dollars to build something like this. You know, what does it bring to the people? It looks nice. It's great for tourism. It, it, it kind of enhances the view of Omaha. No offense, Omaha. I mean, it used to be that this area that we were, that we're kind of looking at, you see the um, First National Tower kind of in the background, and you can kind of see the CenturyLink building right here. Um, the deal is... When this, well, before this bridge was built, there was like a lead plant uh, that was down here along the river. It was like a toxic dump, is basically what it was. When they built the Quest Center or the CenturyLink, they had to bring in a whole bunch of dirt and remove a whole bunch of contaminated dirt. Uh, because it was like, you know, it's kind of like Love Canal, if you guys remember talking about that. So this bridge in itself is an example of what we're going to talk about here with pork barrel legislation, and maybe even some of these other kind of federal projects. Uh, what is pork barrel legislation? Okay, this is basically an opportunity to bring a little something extra home uh, for your people. So lawmakers will use their contacts, their position in Congress to get some needed projects, maybe a building of a bridge or a highway or um, a research facility, which we have kind of all done here in the state of Nebraska. Uh, the money and all that can help spur our economy. It may add jobs, okay, to, you know, a community that has, you know, the home of these projects. So it looks great for the lawmaker. You know, the question is how necessary is it? And that, that's something that's in debate. Um, we've spent a lot of money in our Congress for you know, building these federal projects, some of which were needed. I mean, like when we talk about things that happened after 9-11, some of those were probably needed things. Like, for example, uh, University of Nebraska Medical Center, UMMC, uh, got the biocontainment unit. Okay, what have they been doing with the biocontainment unit lately? 
Ebola. Okay, we've had a lot of people there. It's one of the best facilities in the nation, and that's the reason why they've been bringing all these patients to Omaha. That facility didn't exist before 9-11, okay? And it all deals with things that happen as a result of that event, okay? And we can thank our members of Congress back in 2001 who moved that money towards the state, okay? The idea that you would have this unit in the middle of the country where we're relatively safe, um, you know, you don't have a huge population here. All that's seen as a positive. Okay, federal government contracts. Uh, lawmakers compete for these contracts by pressuring, oh, pressuring officials from the executive branch to give them favorable hearings. I'll move this up um, for their home state. As far as like making sure that Offutt Air Force Base stays in Bellevue, Nebraska, that's part of that. Uh, there has been talk over the years to close Offutt. And what usually comes up is that, you know, this is a, a valuable site. Um, you got a trained workforce, low cost of living here in the Midwest. Um, they have found other uses for Offit. It's more than just, you know, launching uh, looking glass, which, you know, kind of was the whole purpose of it back in the Cold War. Uh, now we're kind of kind of monitoring some of the things that happen with the government satellites that are up in space. So there's a little bit of, um, reconnaissance that's going on but at the same time um, since we're kind of in the heartland we're kind of protected a little bit and that's that's kind of seen as a positive and that's the reason why we've been able to keep that base uh, citizens uh, let's say we've got some individuals who are, are private entrepreneurs who want to expand maybe a business uh, they may get some government contracts that will help them do that. So you could take a company like, let's say Google, and if the Google like ties in with maybe the federal government, maybe on some kind of project, they will get money, you know, to help expand a little bit. And that's good for the company, but it's also good for that state that's hosting it. All right, keeping federal projects, lawmakers use their expert staff members uh, to help their states qualify for new projects and to keep those that they already have alive. So we're going to find multi-purposes multi for the things that we already have and um, just try to keep building upon what we've got. And we need to do that if we want to stay, you know, kind of up with the pace of the rest of the nation. This is why having like an experienced member in Congress, somebody who's been there for a while, it's kind of a positive because they've got the support staffing and they've got the connections. And a lot of times they kind of know how the money trickles down. Uh, if they can make that happen, then we can probably see the benefit of it back here in this state. All right. These are the notes for Chapter 7. Uh, those of you who are watching this, just a reminder, you're going to be receiving an email that has some information about uh, the items that you need to highlight for your upcoming test. Have a great day.